Uh, maybe an outside shot still if they have another good game right here. Uh, and beyond that, I think it's maybe starting to become a little bit too difficult to catch the top of the table. You're talking about a 21-point gap between Valiant in first and SRY in fifth. So from SRY downwards, you'd need to have an absolutely mammoth game right here in game five to get back into that discussion as we head into game six and see whether or not they can top the lobby. But still, two games to go. This one included, obviously. To see whether or not you can take a top spot at the very start of the 2022-2023 season of ALGS for Apex South. Yeah, it's, uh, there's a lot to consider there, isn't there? Um, I'm just having a look at uh, where these teams are dropping. Um, Sneaky B, no longer in Dome. They've actually moved over to launch site um, for for today. I, I don't know if that'll stay the same with all the groups. You know, maybe they just uh, want to get out of Dugu players' way. Um, haven't been out of reaching agreements about uh, where they should be ending up. Um, okay. And then, uh, yeah, just... Okay, yep. Yeah. I hate Absolutely. to cut you off, but, but I am yeah. seeing uh, MDY, they did drop in Lava Siphon last game, if you remember. They've actually kind of half dropped at Big Maud this time. Um, you can see on the minimap here, and that's sort of chased Sway away from Big Maud. So for, um, for SRY, yeah, right. who were getting Lava City and Big Maud, they're going to be a bit unhappy with that, uh, losing out on a bit of loot. But neither team really running into to one another. They've both heard each other and um, kind of just parted ways. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not like an unusual split, right, to have one team in Big Maud and one team in Lava City. But yeah, as you say, it's it's a big downgrade for SRY, um, who would love to be picking up the Double Crafters, the Beacon, uh, the the upgraded Rampart guns. Um, you know, that's that's a pretty nuts uh, amount of loot and information um, to be to be getting out of there with. Uh, meanwhile, in the the middle of the map, you can see uh, we've got RWD here over at Landslide, um, and Golden Sage. I'm not sure if they actually dropped in the same spot because they're only just making their way over to Countdown right now, um, which I'm assuming must have been in the hot zone because they've just spotted out a Golden Longbow. Hmm. Well, uh, we'll keep our eyes on Moist, who are making a pretty early rotation out of Lava Siphon. They don't actually have the second ring information. That's why they're headed over to Ghost Town here. Um, to sort of hit that beacon, get a bit of info, and presumably then they'll obviously make uh, their rotation accordingly. As you said, this does get a little bit scarier when you've only got the Newcastle shield instead of the Gibraltar shield. So you can see the shots coming through from uh, Overlook, but none of them actually connecting onto Waltzy there. So he'll be okay. And information that the zone is headed up toward Epicenter is going to keep Moist pushing their way northward. Yep. Teams Valk holding into survey camp already. Uh, Valiant. These guys just have their... Uh, you know, have their eyes on the prize this series, don't they? They are well... Um, they're already in the single building that's to the north of Epicenter. It's very hard to find good cover and good places to play from up there. But, you know, player K... Um, who's got that Watson heirloom in his hands is going to be ready to be doing something like that. But if we go further down the map, um, teams are going to have to fight their way through um, to make it up. And you can see um, that Skyhook is where things are going to be heating up here. Truth is going up against Hermagerd. Hermagerd indeed. And they've actually got to be aware as well because RWD is walking their way through that choke point in the direction of Skyhook as well. So Hermagerd, it's actually kind of good that they've been able to push out of the tunnel because otherwise they would have been stuck in a sandwich. Now, those shots may be actually more likely to go in onto Truth once RWD does arrive. Either way, I think both Hermagerd and Truth are kind of happy to let this one yeah. all by the wayside and disengage from it, which is a very wise decision because RWD, they were really looking for that third party. Not going to get it this time. Yep, charging through the tunnel. Um, but yeah, they back off. I mean, these guys are in the circle, right? The rounds, they've got two minutes until the round closes. And they've got a bunch of time after that as well. So they, you know, they're under no pressure to really move out or, or clear out this position. Um, mm. So they can move on. I mean, the, the other thing I'll touch on quickly is, you know, it's just funny to think that Mitsurasama is not on Caustic anymore. I mean, that's wild, right? I mean, this guy made yeah. that pick his own. And this was well before a Caustic meta. This was well before teams like uh, Reignite or Dark Zero were picking up that Caustic. He's been playing it for that long. 
Um, so to see him move over to the Watson is uh, quite a shift in tone uh, for the whole region, let alone uh, for Natsurasama himself. Yeah, it definitely was kind of his thing, wasn't it? But, I mean, as far as swaps are concerned, I, I sort of feel as though Orsic into Watson still fills a similar role. So Defensive maybe legend. there's a, yep. yeah, a degree of comfort there still for him. Um, Bangalore smokes. Uh, you know, obviously, we, we've touched on it a couple of times. Exo with this Bangalore. Not a, a legend that you see very often, but it is a legend that Exo have been known to play fairly often. So they kind of got that, that one little bit of point of a difference for most teams. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a nice little alternative, I suppose, to the GB bubble in some cases. You see them dropping it there on the replicator to replicate a little bit safer. Um, can fill that role. It's always nice to see teams having a little bit of a different different take on what to bring to the table. But it is, I, I gotta I, say, it's not working today. <laughs> well, I, I'm not surprised. I mean, how many Seers do we have in the in the game mm. again? I mean, your smokes are useless against the Seer ultimate, right? It's just... Uh, it feels like the, the situations in which that would be useful um, are really diminished when you have this many wall hacks currently working in the game. So, look, they're going to they're gonna keep trying it. Uh, doesn't matter if it's World Edge, Storm Point, they're still bringing it out. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll be interested to see if they stick with that throughout the entire season. They were united right on top of Epicenter. They were actually one of the first teams to rotate into the second zone. And, um, well, they've taken King of the Hill kind of position. Stinky B uh, underneath. And Exo, talking about that Bangalore, are going to get themselves into a fight. They've already found themselves a knock. That was onto no name, courtesy of Ziki. They're fighting over Landslide, which is really not premium territory at the moment. <laughs> Killer Pods will just lose that engagement. The trade doesn't actually come through from EXO, so it's a two for two, or two on two at the moment. Oh, oh there's yep. some good Team shots off. in though from Dexter. They do manage to get the, the shield bats off, but they're still down a player at this point. So EXO finally have found that isolated fight that they wanted to Elfish. As you said, it's not premium territory, but that's mm. where you want to be as an edge team. Because that means you're not getting third party, and we've seen that happen way too many times to EXO so far in this series. Yeah, they'll be able to do some replicating out there as well. Uh, and get themselves ready to make the rotation in. Got a little bit of time to work with. A couple of minutes before the zone shift does begin. GQ under a bit of pressure toward the northern side of the zone. And that is, I think, going to continue to mount. Because there's more and more teams making their way through this area of the map. MDY only just now going to start coming down from the north. And that might actually be the third party that neither GQ or Valiant want to be seeing. There's a kill on the strafing flame from Big Boss. So here comes MDY. What can they do about this? I'm already down a player, just trying to stall out with a couple of grenades there. As you said, that building, you know, talking about premium territory, that is exactly where you want to be. That's the thermite. thermite grenades do land, and Feiju is looking to take advantage of that. They do, mm -hmm. and GQ goes out. Yeah, Valiant, um... Just hanging on with player K right now. Has got himself tucked down in the crevasse near the lava lake. And actually, MDY is going to make their way forward. They're going to continue to push. They're looking now at free agents on the bridge. They're going to try to take a fight against that. And that is a really good push from MDY. They know free agents are weak. They saw Belkin with the white armor. Mexus with the blue. They've got that knock already. They're going to continue trying to challenge, trying to pressure. Well, they get further and further in. The flatline from Feiju it was enough to take out GQ, and he's going to pressure even further. Free agents not completely out yet. Lahim has managed to make his his way out there, but doesn't even manage to pick up the banners. Not that we've seen a lot of respawns today, I will say that. Mm. Play okay. I, I did think maybe he had a chance of going for the banners there while MDY was a bit occupied with free agents. He didn't opt to go for it, and now... Uh, obviously, Strafing Flame timing out, and Anna will as well, because MDY are still sitting on top of those pieces. So, it will just be player K to try to hold on to this one for Valiant, which is very important, considering they're the team at the top of the lobby. We really have to keep an eye and see on what player K can do in terms of getting them some more placement points. If he can, you know, rat his way through to a, a reasonable placing, 
get another three, four, five points on the board. That could well shore them up for a, a first place in this lobby. If he's unable to do that, though, you know, you're really going to be opening the door up for, for teams like Moist Esports and they were united. Maybe we talked about them as well. <laughs> Free agents, although they are down to just a solo, um, to sort of come back into the swing of things and maybe challenge for first place. Yeah, it feels like he's going to be doing solidly either way, right? I mean, they there was a bit of a, a, a bit of a buffer there. Not too many teams um, putting up the big points today, but yeah, look, the difference between first and getting 25 points or, or slipping down there and only grabbing say like 18 or 17 could be a big difference. Um, you know, at the end of this split when you're trying to either make it into that top 20 or make it into land. So, um, yeah, as you say, a couple of placement points could be make all of the difference here for Valiant, who had such a fantastic start um, to this split one. Yeah, SRY putting another consistent foot forward. Uh, have set themselves up on the northern side of Fragment West, alongside a bunch of other teams, it must be said. Uh, again, I suppose it's not too much of a surprise, given the, the compositions that we've got being run by the majority of the lobby that we're going to be seeing a lot of teams happy to set up inside of buildings. Actually, sir, I might have got that wrong. Uh, Lane did have the banners and he has uh, gone over and res them uh, at the respawn that we were just talking about the game before uh, the one over in Overlook. Um, mm. So he's off screen right now. He's actually to the, to the right because uh, he's all the way out in the zone and they're actually going to um, just quickly try and craft a couple of med kits and then they'll be coming back inside but yeah look back up to the full three players still a pretty tough situation for them they've obviously not gonna get themselves too much loot in the time that they've got available to them they'll also have, kind of have to go through 505 who would have seen uh the the respawn ship coming through the air and would be aware that there's a team behind them inside the zone axilic really keeping an eye on that i can see on the minimap so uh, i think it's still going to be a pretty cursed game here for free agents they are going to need to pull off a miracle to be able to overtake valiant with this one I believe. Uh, maybe they can do that. They've been pretty good today. So as the circle shifted sort of under Epicenter, we're seeing these, uh, this region become a little bit more desirable and, and teams like Boogie Boarders who are set up on the train station or Hermagerd who are just uh, a little bit north of the Boogie Boarders right now. Um, looking actually in a, in a fairly good situation. Exo a bit further to the south, um, also on that similar similar train track line. Um, and then you got a lot of teams still sitting within Fragment West. Oh my god, just being <laughs> very patient, aren't they? Alright, here comes the Skyward Dive. Where are they going to end up? I'm surprised that they're pulling it that far, actually. I mean, they do. They they don't have the info about where this circle is going, and the circle is going um, to Fragment West. Um, so it, it, look, it's the right call. Maybe they've seen some other teams foul culting and just sort of taken their cues from that. Oh, they've landed right under SRY. Just for those that are wondering where they ended up, so just on the uh, northwestern corner of Fragment West. Not exactly the greatest of places to be when there's teams right above you going to be able to throw down some shots and util and stuff, but. Maybe they can carve out their position inside the zone. Lahim Belkin and Mexius, that's free agents, making their way in. And as we mentioned, they're going to have to go past 505. You've got Daywa United as well, uh, hanging around in this area of the map. And for, for free agents, just down to a couple of white armors, it's not going to be a fun run in. Moist Esports have lost Jaro. Not sure what their chances of getting a res are. Probably not very. There's a lot of teams congested up toward uh, uh, Epicenter. Yeah, th there is a, a, a respawn beacon not too far away from them, right? But as you say, they would have to clear out, as a duo, uh, probably Golden Sage and MDY. Yeah, good shots coming in there from Waltzy, but end of the day, not enough to get the knock. He's still under that pressure. Gonna have to pop the bat. The alternator pylon does go down as well. The micro drones causing problems. I mean, it's all... <laughs> it's all pain at the moment for Moist, isn't it? MT, he's going to get knocked. Waltzy did manage to get that bat off, but he's going to have to play for himself at this point. And I'm not sure that's going to last too much longer. Yeah, it almost popped at a good time because the, uh, the Arc Star, of course, does more damage to shields than it does to health. So it, it damaged his health just before he got the bat off and managed to, um, you know, fully get his shields back up and running. But yeah, look, um, just by himself there, that's going to be a very tough ask. They know he's there. The Seer 
gets the scan onto him. You can see all three members aware of where the solo is, and I think Waltzy is not long for this world. Yeah, um, speaking of as well, free agents did just get knocked out as well. They went out in 14th, Moist follows them in 13th, which is actually really good news if you're a Valiant fan. I mean, the two teams that are basically hot on the heels of Valiant have been pretty much taken out of the game without a point or, you know, with maybe some kill points here and there, but nothing really too substantial. So even if Valiant hasn't had a very good game here, um, you're, you're still sort of seeing their closest competitors are also struggling, which means uh, net neutral, really, for Valiant. It was Valiant, Moist, and Free Agents, all three of those teams toward the top of the scoreboard, have all dropped already in this game. Of the big dogs out. Maybe a chance for some of those teams to lower down to make their play now. Still two games to do that, of course. A six game series. We're in game five. MDY. Perhaps looking to make their move now because MDY White, they're currently sitting on seven kills in this game. We've seen a, a bunch of those happen already, and, you know, they're, they're not done with it yet, obviously, Elfish. They're still pushing. And it's Mingwei. Well, there's a kill leader with four. They're just above Easy Flash, actually. Yeah, nice. Perfect. Perfect timing there from our observers to show the awesome rat spot in the lava. But we were kind of mm. talking about this before. The Seer, he's going to be popping that heartbeat sensor um, to try and work out uh, where this this uh, where this where legend is, right? So Feiju is going to be letting them know that there is someone nearby. And honestly, it's not even going to be an awesome rat spot for that much longer because the circle, as you can see, has pulled very hard south, which means Easy Flash, MDY White, everyone really up there is going to have to move their way down to um, the marketplace that Pricey is in. Uh, you've got Dugu Play sitting on like that, that building that is at the edge of the bridge. So those are kind of where we're going to end. Well, which means everyone outside is going to have to have a big fight in just a moment. There's an EMP out. Exo. Going to be copying that. Up against Chambers. Emmanuel. Yeah, their former teammate as well is going to be pushing their way in on top of them. It's uh, it's going to be a bit of a mess. Northside just trying to hold tight here. Uh, they might be able to come on top of this kill. There's a, there, there is a duo sitting outside. They've been spotted though. Some of them going down now as well. Exo being very clean so far and pushing this out, but other teams are thinking about it too. Seer Ultimates coming down from the north side. SRY are looking to finish off this. And is this yet again Exo biting off more than they can chew? Oh, I think it absolutely is. Killer Pulse, I'd be really surprised if he gets out of this one alive. Quick armor swap, keeps himself healthy. He goes for another, gets up and over the top. Good movement here from Killapoz. And somehow, he's going to get out of that one alive, at least as an individual. But Exo certainly will not be getting any more members back up. He's going to have to try to rat it out here. Uh, it's still a very busy side of the zone. He has just gotten out of the majority of that engagement. You are going to be seeing a man well, really in the thick of things against MDY. SRY as well. I think they've just gone down. And Manuel does eventually drop. Hermagerd up into the middle of the market. I'm going to take the fight to truth. There's multiple fights happening all over this final circle. And none of them look fun. MDY, they need to get Feiju back up. And uh, Hermagerd at the top here. Um, and it looks like they're fighting for market, right? Of course, market, when you see one of these uh, Fragment West zones, it very often ends up around either market or just north of it. So, of course, teams are setting up all of their Watson defenses over here. MDY, um, they did finally manage to finish off EXO. And they managed to get Feiju back up as well. So, they are on track to have an absolutely ridiculous game if they can take out the dub here. If being the operative word, because there's still quite a few really solid teams here. I mean, I think positioning for Truth is pretty good. Uh, do good play as well. They've been really keeping their heads down. So, I think... In terms of what they've got available to them, there's probably a lot to play with in terms of the meds. Uh, ammo is looking a little bit dry on them as I just cycle through the, the list, but hopefully a few nades as well in the back pocket. Either way, we're in the eye of the storm now. We've seen a lot of fighting. It's slowed down a little bit. As yeah. this ring starts to push its way forward, that's where it's going to pick back up again. Yeah, you can see there, I kill only noob. Zero heavy. Uh, Moonlight Tears, his, uh, his compatriot there has one clip left. So they've got obviously zero heavy to share around. Uh, a couple of loot boxes would do them. 
a world of good. And of course, you're just going to start seeing those Seer Ultimates. Everyone knows where everyone is. There's no yep. fog of war in Apex Legends. Certainly not. And that is a very nice couple of shots initially from Nutsuru Sama, but still no knock. Absolutely obscene. At least not from him. There are knocks coming through onto the team that he is shooting at, but for truth, they haven't really been able to get too much out of that. Just the one kill onto Mobius. Either way, still looking fairly healthy. And just playing as much as they can with that zone. They've got the castle walls up here as well. Putting down the fences. Trying to make life as difficult as possible for anyone headed in their direction. Five squads left alive, three within market, and you can see the two that have got their, their pylons set up down the bottom here. That's MDY to the left, and Dugu play to the right. I will say, Dugu play, even though they've got three members here, are pretty much a duo, because I kill only Noob has, as we've said, zero ammo in the flatline, and now he's also got zero ammo in his R301. He's going to have to get in there and get his punch on, because he has literally got no ammo. And that's going to be really great news for everyone else. Truth Esports pushing their way forward. Going to have one less player to worry about, but now they've only got one player to worry about. It's Nutsuru Sama trying to keep himself alive and healing on up. Can't get any reses out there. Truth down. Hermagod down. It is just the three members. I'm still watching I Kill Only Noob using his melee tool to try to win the fight. It's three on three against MDY White. He's punching them, but it's not enough. MDY White will walk away with the victory, and you've got to imagine what a difference some bloody ammo could have done there for Dugu Play. I mean, bloody's the right word. He was uh, almost getting his knuckles bloody. Uh, of course, he, he he did have the Watson hair loop. So, you know, uh, as you said, he's tall. Just whack it away with it there. Yeah. Um, 